please, if anyone needs me to repeat the question, let me know. Happy to do it. In a time of continually constrained resources, sounds like a movie trailer. <laughs> I could, that could be a good second job for me. Uh, oh, more sinister. Uh, in a time of continually constrained resources, what should be the essential purpose of the Office of Cultural Affairs? And do you think the funds currently allocated to the OCA would be put to better use by increasing the arts grants pool and distributing those dollars to community organizations? Just two parts there. I think that's a really uh, great question because I think this is a question that is going to challenge us next year as we look to fund various uh, arts programs throughout our city. Uh, I, I think that, well, I believe that the Office of Cultural Affairs is doing a fantastic job of really bringing communities together, showcasing various arts throughout our city from different youth groups, um, arts group, and throughout. And so my uh, pledge to you as mayor is to continue to fund the Office of Cultural Affairs. If we have more funding, we would definitely be able to fund more, increase their funding each year so that they can continue to do the outstanding work that they do. And I think that it's so great for a city to have one office that can connect so many different um, facets of our, of our community. I remember working on different uh, arts events in the Vietnamese American community, and every time we go down there, and the staff is just incredibly kind and, and very cordial. And it's just so nice to see that kind of customer service uh, from this office. And so our budget is not as bad as people think. We actually have a 1.1 surplus <laughs> next year. Well, it's, you know, we don't have a deficit. Um, obviously, a lot of the work uh, that has derived from that uh, came from the measure B, the pension reform measure that most of you supported uh, in 2012. So we're reaping a lot of financial benefits now. And if we can actually use some of those uh, financial benefits and actually allocate and make our arts and cultural environment more uh, vibrant, that is something that I look forward to doing. Thank you. The premise behind the question is in past budgets, we had uh, used a transit occupancy tax, hotel tax money to fund OCA, and then, or OCA was funded by the general fund, and then we shifted a little bit from the hotel tax to fund the OCA people. Um, so for where I see OCA today, I don't see expanding it. I see leave it where it is as far as the personnel today. Any increment that grows above, then that and give that to the art groups. But you do need people in the Office of Cultural Affairs to manage the races that go through the neighborhoods, to manage the public art process so we don't have another Quetzalcoatl again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I recently used OCA for a project in my district. Last year, I allocated $20,000 out of my office budget. I run a surplus every year because I don't have a secretary, so I save you money. Uh, and I took that $20,000 and I wanted to beautify a part of uh, my district. So if you know Lincoln Avenue as it passes under Highway 280, there's several freeway columns there. So if you go out there today, you'll see people that are painting. It took us about 10 months to get through Caltrans permit. Uh, but they're painting each column different colors, uh, set up by an artist who looked at the historical uh, adobe that was next door and took some uh, uh, parts of the different flags of the heritage of the, the settlers that came. And those are being painted now and they'll be graffiti coated. Uh, for me, it's an inexpensive way, in, in terms of all the other numbers you hear in government, of making an area look beautiful. For me, it started with Art Box. Art box. I used my excess campaign friends for my city council campaign to fund several of those boxes, and I've gotten other people in the community to fund them as well, because that's an inexpensive way of beautifying the city. And I think once this project's done on Monday, if you go under Lincoln and 280, you'll see it all lit up. So I think those are the things that we need to look at, but as far as the cultural affairs budget, Keep that staff where it is as, the, in, as revenues increase. Give it out to the arts communities based on the performance-based standards that we have in place. Thank you. Yes, I'd have no intention of uh, uh, limiting or, or uh, cannibalizing uh, OCA. I think when it comes to art, especially public art projects, my experience over eight years, and maybe it says something about me, is it's one of the areas that's most difficult uh, to play any kind of an arbiter role uh, or intermediate role or mediation role 
the council member and the community really um, has, has an opportunity to, to be the ones to make a call to action and say, this is what's needed here in this park, in this corner, in this location, um, but to try to get into make calling, uh, making the call on uh, a subjective thing like art and beauty of art and even things as simple as what colors things should be is, is very, very difficult uh, for a single political person uh, to do or even a city council for that matter. Uh, certainly a mayor, uh, uh, I as mayor, do not want to get uh, into the middle of a situation where uh, I'm trying to make the call uh, as to what's the best thing for the city of San Jose in terms of a particular piece of art or a commissioned piece of art or who should be commissioned to do that art. Uh, so we need uh, independence in that regard. Uh, I believe that we're on a rising tide economically. I, I hope during this campaign uh, that we're not getting bogged down on how things have been in the deepest recession since the 1930s. We need to remember that property tax is increasing probably by double digits this year. Sales tax is going to be increasing. And we need to, uh, to not give up anything that we're accustomed to having in this community, especially in the arts community.